Still busy the last couple of weeks, luckily for me. Starting to get a few requests now for talks for next year, so that's a good sign. Kids will be kids in any form. Love it. As you know, I'm all raised beds on my uh, one and a half plots and up the back garden. Advantages, no water logging as they have the drainage. Dry soils mean it's warmer soil so you can plant out earlier. If you have any clay soil or full of pebbles or whatever roots from a tree, then have a raised bed. If you have a good brew underneath a plant, you'll have a, a good, strong and healthy plant on top. Common sense, plus less bending. The only one disadvantage with raised beds, they dry it quicker. Once planted out, top dress with straw. That keeps in the moisture and the warmth. And I'll do that with everything. Flowers, fruit, veg a lot. Main reason for raised beds, you don't have to dig. Let the worms do the digging, work with nature. If your beds are four foot wide, you never tread on them because you can reach the middle from either side. You only dig because you've trod on it, you've compacted it. Work with a soil food web, i.e. nature. Now if you remember the last time I put this uh, top of the plot, one of my uh, wooden structures went to uh, AY, so I've replaced that luckily. Screwed back the um, sheeting on the top and then stapled the plastic back onto the timber. So that'll outlast me now. There's the timber I took out. I've had a, a few years out of it, got at least 20 odd here, so I've done well. Glad you're still in the tunnel, back garden. It's quite a f four, four or five more pots to still flower. The others are drying off. When they have dried off, either centre will be a straw colour, which you can call you see on there. Then I'll take them out and uh, lay them out on me. Mushroom baskets, because I've got loads of air movement inside the tunnel, which is ideal for drying these off. Two inch tops I'll cut down to. And they'll be put on the tray, just building my way up. If I'm keeping the cormorants as well, then I'll put paper underneath so I don't lose them. Right, this one here in the middle was a one-off. He's really super, I love him. So if I get one, then I'll keep the babies off him, which I'm doing on that one. So the cormorants off the bottom will be like him in a couple of years' time. I'm slowly filling the stacking system up in the garage. Right, this is the disabled plots. Uh, people will learn the difficulties at the house because of the COVID. They ain't come down for a uh, well since March, obviously. So there's a few of us, Lars, Clive, and myself, been able to clean out the tunnel for them. Once I did uh, put this up, I put them carpet layers on all the brackets to stop the rubbing of the plastic on the top. But because the grapevine has gone over the top of the metal with the buckets of gloves which I've used I've got some of the oldest gloves and I've put them on top of the grapevine so that doesn't rub on the plastic that's until I can get a, a good piece of carpet to put on my own tunnel on the plot a couple of gladys drying off this is my bonsai which I jobbed earlier on and that's what it looks like now I shall keep uh, watering him over winter when he asks for it last year I lost it through uh, not looking after him properly, but uh, that'll do. Right, this end of the um, tunnel has all been clean. It's just that other end now, once I've got rid of that chilli. So I'll get all the chilies off, and then chop the plant off, put them in the green bin for the council, and then uh, just uh, going from left to right, just up, up root it, and that goes in the bin. The, the roots and that's what I take out because it's spent peat. I can use a spent peat later on, which we'll come on to. And the roots, I'll chop them up and then they can be composted. So I'm using the grow bags again. So that's all the, the ends cleared out. Right, looking at these here, these are my three uh, bougainvillea. These are a Spanish pink leaf plant. Because I've been in a cold greenhouse, I'm coming back into colour again because of that extra warmth I thought well it's, it's a shame to waste it so I'll give him a feed a, a weak feed and put him back in the kitchen so he's got a bit of colour because I've got no gladys left to go in vases so now I'm going to start um, cleaning the end of the staging so my cal cap cap 
Pillory matting goes into the Jay's fluid with the warmest water. Don't forget Jay's fluid is weaker than what it was years ago. The staging comes off as well and that gets uh, scrubbed with Jay's fluid all over inside and out so I'm disinfecting the lot. Once I've wrung them out then they'll, they'll have a, a swill in uh, clear water and then I'll hang everything up to dry obviously. Right this is right at the end the so me um, angle iron, I've had them over 30 on here, they've lasted. Plus the other end I found a hole and that's where the mice was coming in. Because I knew it could smell so much and there he is on the angle iron. You see him I could smell earlier on. So I've got to fill the hole up. Went up B&Q, bought this tub. Half a bloody tub, look at it. It's like the rip off it is. Oh it's got to settle, settle my Aris. Anyway, that's gone solid as a ferris. And the other end I've used it as well to um, seal up my um, angle iron. But angle iron is ideal, which is nice and solid, and I can just lift the staging on and off. Pathway, I'm going to, the sides of that, I'm going to job that as well later on. So, all the staging and everything else is nice and clean. I'll put that back in at the end, as you can see. I'll put my two wooden struts. And then another bit of stage on top of that, which gives me extra room, because this end has a door on, which we'll come and see later on. And then I get me a little spirit level, and I want everything level. So I put chunks of wood or labels in. And there, there it is, ready to go. The capillary matting is now dry. So I now scrub them off with a um, stiff iron scrubber. Any bits on anything. And uh, then we'll go back in. So I'm ready that in. Another tub I've opened, it's got pebbles in, that was only half a bloody tub as well. And this stuff you just put it on down and then spray it. It was solid as a ferret, which is what I want. My mate next door, Artley, get us three of these. Because he had to split his, it was, that was going to be wire. So, luckily I found rooms, I'm running out of room, that's the trouble now. When you get the, the flower bulb like I'm getting, shrub or whatever. But I did find room for three. Get them a good soaking once they was in. And uh, once these, because I've got a dark red, a light red and a yellow one, but once they finish flowering, like most other things, then I'll, I'll dead end them, chop the tops off or whatever. And when the gladius are ready in the tunnel, then they'll come out give us a, a little display in the living room with a nice little chap deep clean it does work this is on amazon 19 pound 80 but it kills aphids thrip red spider quite a few things another nice and tiger moth nature weird and wonderful that's the last of me glad he's up now on on the plot so them are in the tunnel in a bit of air circulation around them. These combs are uh, of singular beauty. I sent them to my mate Keith, who was, who was down south. Good lad. Bougainvillea, doing well. It did start to drop a few uh, leaves, so I, I go give them a spray outside now and then. Filling the top uh, raised beds, the last raised beds. I sm uh, goat muck from down the bottom. Rabbit muck, we're having to get off. And that embed it rained overnight, so I put the cover back on. Extra is rabbit mug. I caught him uh, delivering last week, and he's, he's now got 70 odd rabbits. That's why he drops off three lots during the, the week, which is ideal for us. Also, on these was uh, the spent off dried shredded goat mug, spent peat from my grow bags, and shredded uh, mushroom compost. Which I used to use in the wormery, but I don't use that anymore. Spent coffee grounds and uh, basalt rock dust. And the forecast rain, so I get it a good watering, as I call forecast. Then it got to be covered, keep the moisture in. Nature, get going. And I use the tent pegs to tape them down. He comes from uh, the Philippines. You also get them in Madagascar. Right, mate, um, Keith, do I set them cormlets too? 
he sent me this as a thank you he knows I like my climbers and I googled it and uh, that's the flowers you get off it it's very similar to me uh, my Spanish uh, flower bougainvillea so I found a place for him obviously up against the back fence he's on the right hand side give him good watering then I managed to get a, a wire little bit in the middle hold him up stapled and then one straight away across look along split him so I'll go left and right you know, just about make the wire out there going down the wash it sprouts got away with not netting this year because of the pigeons landing on them and yomping all the green I'll probably take a few more leaves off next week but uh, if it, whatever you still got in feed them and you'll get a better return common sense last delivery I, I did have the last delivery because he hadn't got no stuff but he, he, he managed to get it hamper I did for my niece last year for a charity event raffle prize enjoyed making them up if you're using one of these tops for watering make sure you take the ring off on the right hand side before you put the top on strawberries they need jobbing out thinning they was going a wire knitting nice secure at the top there's quite a few strawberries on pretty when they get no sun or heat to turn them but we've got to get right in there because there's loads of runners on so there's a load come out the first uh, that bag there which i took out the mate come down mal from uh a lot more side down starmish and he took a bag away with him get him for parsnips when he got up but uh, I went through the lot you've got to be cruel to be kind top up again with me uh, top dressing with me rabbit muck so I've got three bags of that in took them back up to the, the raised bed and done the lot just keep the moisture in and the warmth if we get a frost it'll protect the roots the tops of the plants I've cut off as well because there's new growth underneath right the blue pipe and I get from you can get from B&Q or screw fix 20 quid a roll 20 meter the blue is a uh, waterboard yellow gas pipe but my loops what I put I put a cane right down the end as you can see there and then I cut it off and then tape it to the, um, the plastic and then there's eight foot canes along the top taping holding together the cane onto the pipe as well that keeps a nice solid structure then i've got me 10 pegs again then was off ebay to all the netting in all together so i know it's nice and neat and the netting is tucked inside the the bed taking it hanging on the outside another job out the road but it's worth doing nice solid structure and it lasts because I'm a little bit of wire all it up. Right, composting. I've chopped all my kitchen and garden waste. Also, I've got um, pumpkins which people have discarded for whatever reason, but worms love it. My other ingredients, which are all bagged up, the then go and take the carpet off that, which protects them, and then the pl plastic sheet, which stops the rain getting in, to uh, open up all my little bags underneath all these I have a double handful of leaf mould chicken manure wood burner ash straw worm cast wood chip sand sawdust spent mushroom compost spent hops basalt rock dust spent peat topsoil seaweed alpaca muck spent coffee grounds goat muck bracken all natural products there's only three of them I'm paying for if they're more natural I'm all going to break down use them so i'll take them down my bag once it's, it's been mixed take the lid off carpet on top first one i take off worms in between the two carpets because it's nice moist and warm that's where i get mixed worms from and that carpet goes on top of me uh, lid and there's the other carpet which i take off and there's worms underneath that so they go on the lid, wait until I've finished there and shake them worms onto there. So that is after a week. That's what my little babies are doing all the work for us. So all my mixed chopped ingredients are now going in the bin. That gets leveled off. 
And what I'm uh, using is liquid manure. Or if I want to piddle, I'll piddle that in the can as well. Nitrogen. I don't water too much because the, there's moisture in there. And then I shake the worms from the carpet back onto the top. So you've got your extra worms. Whatever manure you get, you use, you get your worms in that anyway. The other carpets go back on. They don't need watering. They are still moist from the last time. Then you put the lid back on. Because I've taped over the fronts ready for the winter, i.e. that little door is sealed up, I now take the brick off and just open, crack the, the lid so air can get in that way. You've still got to get air in your bin, but because I've sealed the front door, air don't get in that way. So the bricks are taken off and I've marked all the top of the bins now, ready for winter. And the forecast a bit of snow and all, I hope they've got that wrong. That's me ready compost, what it looks like now. I was just over a month, but that's a good brew. I just started using that again as a growing medium. What I used to do was uh, rip up me lure rolls and egg boxes. All I rip up now is the egg boxes because they're not flat. My lure rolls, I cut them and put them through the shredder. Easier than ripping them up. These are nine quid, that's what I use from uh, Lidl to chop everything up, that grounds me. Make sure. This is when I had my old wormery for getting my extra worms. But all these are little extras that you could put in your compost as well. Oyster shell, that's a good one. Worms, love them and all. Uh, chicken pellets, they love them and all. Look at him, snug as a mouse in an apple. Curly cow, kill cut, still cutting that when we have a uh, meat and veg or whatever. Just cut off what we need for dinner. That's a bit dry. Needs a dollop on, another dollop of gravy on there. Uh, love me veg or raspberries because I'm autumn raspberry. That'll be jobbed at early Feb. Just a, a week's difference, you of the colour. I'm getting more colour on it. If you get a dry day and the grass is, the lawn is dry, you know, cut it. There's my old tubers I'm breaking off, which is this year's corn, leaving next year's corn. Right, if you're on, the, if you're on Facebook, get on the British Gladiator Society. I put my album on last week. There's over 100 um, photos on. It's my story in the world of Gladiola. But I've learned quite a bit on that. But there's still quite a bit of colour to say we've had a, a couple of frosts. I suppose it'll take a good one to job them. But uh, that's winter, I suppose. So everything that has flowered or finishing flowering, I'm going to cut back and put in the green bin, as we've only got one green bin left this year. But I use the neighbours in a row, so I ain't get stuck. So new growth, you can see the leaves in the middle, so everything else is, is cut off. All the old bedding will come out soon as well. I think that was a flock, so I, I, I had that from the middle and all those plugs. Uh, I think these are daisies, but I'm taking the, I planted lobelia in between all of them, so I'm taking the lobelia out because I bought these from Wilco a while back. So now I'll get me bedding out, I'll bung these in. I also had these from, uh, I think that was, oh, J Parks, I sent away for them. Oh, this is a nice, uh, Give me extra bit of colour, so I've laid my bulbs out to put out, and then uh, you know, in between them I'll get these. On these there was a uh, splitting open, so I did split them. Give me more plants. Every every bulb we put in is going to uh, multiply or go bigger, larger, split or whatever. So I've got everything laid out ready where I want it to go in. Should be running out of space in your own. So they're going at the top, bottom, and down the one side. When I've planted one in, I put my scissors on top so I know where I've planted him. That was on the top. Down at the side, it ain't too bad because I can see because I'm, I'm on the pathway ready. Just get me uh, soil out, bung them in a bin or whatever container, then bung them back in again. I'll get some more wood chip later, go back over there, and that's done his job. Front of the house, 
a bunch of them in here as well. This is back garden again. We used to have fuchsias before that was here. Small flowering fuchsia and the roots still bloody come through. But uh, I've got rid of most of them. There's only this one bit now and I sprayed him. Look at this little chap. He can hide very well, can he? Gladdy, another one ready in the tunnel, back garden. So I've got him up. And he'll go in the living room as well. So there's another three, nice and up. Different bit of colour. Plus the dahlias I'm still picking. And the Astromeria. Right, Delphiniums. This is the third time they've flowered this year. If you are on Facebook, go on the Delphinium Society UK as well. And I've learnt on there. Once they've flowered, if you cut them off and feed them straight away, they'll start growing again. That's why you get more flowerings of them. I bought these from Wilco uh, yeah, a couple of months ago. But they started um, root rooting, so I planted them up. That's what they're going to end up looking like. I think they're only about a foot high or something, but it's an extra bit of colour. So I found some space. Just about. Put my little uh, wooden sticker uh, label in. Then only last 12 months, and crap, them bloody rot off. In the tunnel, still doing a long bougainvillea again. In the, you can see how just that little bit of warmth, don't forget this is cold greenhouse, but just that extra warm, the leaves are turning pink. Signs of my shallots coming through, it's good. Then my mace Jasons, I've potted them on for him. I know he, he struggles for time or whatever. That was the first frost about a week ago. There aren't too many of them, but they have forecast. Christmas cacti, first time he's flowered, but he has got to get us one nice flower. Hydroponics, the equipment from uh, Dutch Pro. Just scrubbing them out, cleaning them out ready. I know it's going to be a nice dry day, so I did it outside. And, uh, I knew the missus went out for a couple of hours, so I did, did the trays in the kitchen. So everything's ready to go back down the plot, nice and clean. I had this from Wilco, the, the bench and the table. Similar to Trigger's broom. I've had it over 20 years. I need the seats I've had to redo. Look at Vera just going out for a, a spray outside. Trading sheds, sat these quiet when you had three customers, so I did my own work, i.e. getting all these photos ready for this blog. Gardening club, we start general meetings and show this year. Wilson Hall Collegate, that's where we have our committee meetings and the mail hall for our show. This is a large room with a stage plus seating all the way around, which is what we need to keep the public in. If they've got a seat and a drink, then that happy, ready for the auction on the night. All produce entered, stays in the show, no reserves. Show day, early start setting up, and we're staging from 10 a.m., judging from 2.30. Three judges for veg, one for flowers, one for domestic. We finish around 4.30, public at about 6. The auction starts at 8. Interval about right 9.15 for 10 minutes. To let people clear the tables, i.e. bought produce, take it back to the car, leaving more room to buy somewhere else. Plus a few have had a drink by then, so start bidding for the wines and cakes. All produce goes for around 11.30pm. Hard work, but the best day of the year for me. Love it. Take care people. See you next time. Cheers all.